Hello and welcome to Study Topics. This week we will be discussing the Brown-Sicard syndrome. Brown-Sicard syndrome is a clinical syndrome that results from a spinal cord injury and it is highly examinable. In order to fully understand this clinical syndrome, you must first understand the type of injury that causes it and second, understand the motor and sensory tracts that are affected that lead to its presentation. To get you thinking, let's start with a question. What type of spinal cord injury results in a Brown-Sicard syndrome? Think you know the answer? Well, a Brown-Sicard syndrome results from damage to one side of the spinal cord. For example, a penetrating knife wound. The image here demonstrates unilateral spinal cord damage with the red depicting injury to one side of the cord. Which of the following options correctly describes Brown-Sicard syndrome? Take 20 seconds to read through your four options and make a choice before I review the correct answer. All right, hopefully you chose B. The correct answer is B. A brown saccard is described as ipsilateral loss of proprioception and vibration sense, ipsilateral loss of motor control, and contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensation. Now, the cause of this pattern of loss is due to the spinal tracts that are affected. Let's take a look at those spinal tracts now. Now, there are three ascending sensory tracts that you should be familiar with. There is first the lateral spinal thalamic tract. This tract is responsible for carrying information about pain and temperature to the brain. We then have the anterior spinal thalamic tract. This tract is responsible for carrying information about crude and light touch to the brain. And then the dorsal columns. This tract is responsible for carrying information about proprioception, vibration, stereognosis, and two-point discrimination to the brain. Now there is one descending motor tract you should be familiar with, and this is the corticospinal tract. This tract carries motor information from the brain to the muscles in the body. Now using this legend here and a color system, I'm going to trace out the different tracts and how they run within the spinal cord to help you understand the brown saccard presentation. In this image, we have the brain, we have the brain stem, and we have the spinal cord. And what is important to know is where these tracks cross within the central nervous system. Now, as we know, the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body and vice versa. So all of these tracks, whether motor or sensory, must cross over at some point to send motor information out to the opposite, opposite side of the body or bring sensory information in to the opposite side of the brain. Now let's start by tracing these tracks out and we'll start with the sensory tracks. Now, while there are two spinothalamic tracks, I will only be drawing one path to represent them both as they travel the same path within the central nervous system. Now for the spinothalamic tracks, we will use purple to represent this track. Now the spinothalamic track, it brings sensory information in to the spinal cord, it ascends the spinal cord one to two levels before crossing over within the spinal cord to bring that sensory information into the brain for processing. Okay, so again, spinal thalamic tract information is coming in, it's coming into that spinal cord, traveling up one or two segments, crossing over within that spinal cord, and then ascending up to have information processed in the contralateral side of the brain. Now, the next track we're gonna talk about is the dorsal columns, and we'll use green to represent that track. So dorsal columns, we have that sensory information is coming in to the spinal cord. It is then ascending the spinal cord and crossing over within the brainstem, specifically in the medulla, to then come up and bring contralateral information in to the brain for processing. The final track, track I'm gonna to draw today is your your motor tract, your corticospinal tract. So this one will be represented in red. The corticospinal tract starts in the cortex 
pathway. It travels down, descends into the brainstem, crosses over in the brainstem, in that medulla, and then brings that motor information out for processing. So to review, we have spinal thalamic tract coming in, crossing at the level of the spinal cord. We have uh, ascending information from the dorsal columns coming in. We'll do a little arrow here. And it ascends and crosses at the level of the brainstem. And then we have motor information coming out and it crosses at the level of the brainstem as well. Now I'll draw a little lesion. So now in the case of, again, that, that idea of that hemisection of the spinal cord, which gives us that brown Sicard presentation, we're gonna see how these tracks are clearly affected, okay? So I've got my black representing a unilateral aspect of spinal cord damage, that hemisection of the spinal cord, and we'll look at how these tracks are all affected. So to start, let's start with those spinal thalamic tracks. Again, here you can see how information ipsilateral, so same side of the lesion, is able to come in, ascend the spinal cord, cross over, and again, that information is able to cross over and be processed, okay? So ipsilateral pain and temperature is intact. Where we see the issue is with that contralateral pain and temperature. And that's because if I draw out that other side, we see the spinal cord information coming up, ascending, crossing over and is blocked by that lesion. So here we see contralateral pain and temperature information cannot get through. Let's move over to our green, to our dorsal columns. So here we see with the dorsal columns, sensory information comes in, it goes to ascend up that spinal cord, but it is blocked. So remember, unlike the spinal thalamic tracts, this tract crosses at the brainstem. So here we see ipsilateral loss of proprioception and vibration, which is carried by those dorsal columns. And then finally, the motor tract. Let's get our red pen color. So we have the, the uh, corticospinal tract starting here in the cortex, comes down, crosses over, and then we see it gets blocked. So again, that descending information is blocked. This results in the loss of any motor function below that side of lesion, so it's ipsilateral. So the motor messages cannot get through due to this injury, and thus there is no motor output ipsilateral to the side of lesion. So as a review, with your brown saccard, we have ipsilateral loss of motor function. We have ipsilateral loss of proprioception vibration. And we have contralateral loss of pain and temperature. All right, that's all I have for you on today's study topics. I hope you have found this video really helpful. And now that you have a better understanding of Brown Sicard, you can attack those multiple choice questions on your next exam. Thank you so much for joining me today and please do not hesitate to reach out directly to us if you have any questions about our full practical or written courses. We are always here to help.